What's up guys, welcome back to another video with me Hamza Sheikh. Today's video is going to be a Photoshop drawing tutorial for an architectural collage, something I've been doing for a very long time now. It's my kind of preferred illustration style. One, because it's quite easy to do if you know the steps and the techniques. So what I'm gonna show you guys today is the workflow for this particular drawing and it will be a step-by-step -step process. I'll talk you guys through the entire process. I'll obviously speed up the parts that can be speeded up. So make sure you stay tuned to the end because the final touch-ups and all those final level adjustments and the burning and the dodging, all of those parts are really crucial to get that desired finish. And in fact, you know, taking it further and doing all these different kind of variations that you're seeing right now on your screen, this is also something I love to do and it allows you to really get more drawings out of your process. So so uh, yeah, make sure you stay tuned to the end to find out exactly how you can get these results. Enjoy the video guys. Okay, so what you're seeing on your screen right now is my image selection process. However, I've already chose my images and right now I'm just showing you some of the images I chose. So there's a good mix of different architectural drawings that I've sourced from websites like Pinterest or Google and done quite a thorough image search before bringing everything into Photoshop before I start to kind of chop and choose my parts. So in many ways, guys, this is very similar to the actual manual collaging process where you get pictures from magazines or books or whatever uh, and random materials and you start to cut out shapes and aspects of those compositions that you really like that you can then reuse in your own way. So it's pretty much the same process, but just in the digital form. There's loads of positives in doing it digitally. As you can imagine, speed plays a big role. But guys, it's literally the same thing. And so at this point, you can see me just using the lasso tool to just go into the images and cut out certain aspects or features that are interesting or that I think would work well in a composition. And quick note, guys, you know, when coming up with a composition, as many of you will know, thinking about a variety of textures and materials, thinking about the juxtaposition of solid and line and transparent and light and dark, all of these things play a big role in coming up with a good composition. So, you know, certain aspects you might want to use for a background and therefore you'll isolate those objects as textures, but certain things are more solid and they'll want to be at the front of your drawing. So it's really about choosing features of the drawing that you think could work well with a slight idea of composition in mind. I have a basic kind of idea of what I want my drawing to look like, but as you'll see in a second, I just improvised in the end. And that, that really happens from practice, to be honest. And so you'll end up with this, you'll end up with a full layout of all of your different pieces of your composition and your collage. And in many ways, as you can see, it's literally like doing the manual collaging, physical collaging process. And so now you just play. It's a very fun process of now grabbing your pieces, looking at what works with what, grabbing another piece, seeing if that, okay, that might work on top. Here's an aspect that I really like, or you might wanna skew things, you might wanna scale things, you might wanna rotate things. This is the fun part. I really enjoy this process. And the cool thing about this is you can whack on any podcast episode or anything in the background and still be able to work to a high level of kind of design intelligence, I believe. I think there's another part of your brain which is really at work here. And um, I just, yeah, I just love this artistic process. And it, guys, if you're looking for a podcast, then make sure you check out the podcast on my channel, the Two Worlds Design Podcast to increase your architectural insights. Now it's worth mentioning here actually that you're gonna make some mistakes and this is really a process of trial and error. And I don't mean mistakes because there's no mistakes in reality because it's your composition. You decide what's right and wrong. But there's definitely gonna be moves that you change, at least you should change. And you can see I'm deleting stuff, experimenting with new pieces, hiding them, moving them, skewing them. And this is all part of the process of getting to a composition that works. And I think the more you do this, the more your gut feeling ends up being right. So I think sometimes you can make a design decision which at first seems quite good. You're like, oh, that worked great. But then you might come back to this in like 20 minutes or so. And by the way, I do recommend you take breaks, guys, although I did this straight through. 
I think there's a real advantage of coming back to a drawing after taking a breather and then seeing your drawing with fresh eyes because you see a composition in a very different way. It's kind of like if you say a word too many times, it doesn't make sense anymore. I think the same thing applies to a composition. So what I'm saying is you're going to make changes and you should change things. And I guess technically the moves that I'm making, if you haven't already figured this out, are just simple Photoshop blending tools. So just going into the drop down menu over here and just choosing multiply or darken or color burn and just really seeing what works. Some things look good with transparency, some things look better solid. It's really about looking at the level of layering that works well for your composition. Another tip on a technical level that I must talk about is what you're seeing here, which is sometimes you might have to go back into your composition when you get towards the end and think, if I did bring in something that denoted an architectural element, almost looking at creating columns and thinking about beams, sometimes these moves will just be obvious to you towards the end of the drawing and it's a perfectly good time to start to add a little bit more detail to your drawings that are less abstract, let's say. You know, giving the, the roof a little bit of thickness just makes it feel more architectural. And the same thing applies to, you know, bringing in a detailed drawing of a stairs. You know, just bringing in these architectural symbolic components brings the drawing to life. And just a quick request for anyone who is not subscribed, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Chances are, if you've made it this far into the video, you are taking some value and you probably will take a lot of value from the rest of my content. And so up until this point in the drawing, things seem kind of flat. So this is the moment in which we give it real three dimensionality. It's a really important part of the drawing, as I mentioned earlier. This is the end of the drawing where you start to add changes in levels, you start to use the burn and dodge tool, you start to bring in these kind of sunlight beams into the object to really denote the idea of three dimensional space. I'm also burning the edges of some of the objects that I imagine to be in the foreground of this drawing and as you can see it starts to make the object pop. And this is how you create that kind of three dimensional feel from a 2D collage drawing. It's a very crucial part of the drawing process. And you know, even sort of what I'm doing here where you just lighten up the background around the boundary of the object, again, makes it pop. So really thinking about layers, thinking about depth, thinking about light and shadow is really crucial now at this end stage of the drawing. And further to that, I'm just starting to add these other little details that, that just feel right to me. It's hard to really describe why and what I'm doing it's just perhaps because I've done it so much it just feels instinctive for me to add certain elements to the design and kind of just make it my own and I would really advise you guys to do the same if there's something that you like about architecture and you want to bring that level of personality into the drawing this is the point to do that really embellish and add those finalized details to your drawing that will make the drawing unique and here we are guys, we've reached the end of the drawing. Enjoy these final seconds before I show you the final outcome. And there it is guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. This was my final drawing, which I actually further edited using Instagram's editor itself and Photoshop at times as well, just to get different variations of the drawing, different color schemes, different tones, because the beauty of doing these collages is there's such rich compositions that you know you could rotate it 180 degrees and get a whole new drawing, or you could apply a negative effect to it and suddenly it pops in a whole different way. So I really hope you found that useful leave a comment, tell me which of those last five or six images was your favorite. And guys, I'll see you on the next video.